Hey guys, Brandon Gomez here, back again with another video, and it's that time of the year again. It's that time where we look at all the beautiful and not so beautiful throwbacks and give them a rating from 0 to 10. Welcome to Rating Every 2023 Dorlington Throwback Part 1, The Truck Series. Throwback Weekend is my favorite time of the year. It's like NASCAR's Christmas. Tis the season to rate some throwbacks. Without further ado, let's get into it. To start off, we have Chris Wright's throwback to Juan Pablo Montoya's 2007 win at Sonoma. This is a great looking throwback. I love how Young's Motorsports changed their number font to, to match the Ganassi font. And I love how they have... Uh, the red circle with Texas and rightcars.com in yellow text to represent the uh, the Texaco Haviland logo. Really great looking throwback. Right off the bat, we have a 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Johnny Sauter's throwback to Jason Leffler's Hulk truck from 2003. I'm going to be honest, I never knew that this truck ever ran until this throwback was revealed. But anyway, it's a shame that they couldn't put the Hulk on it because, you know, copyright reasons and all that. But they improvised by putting a the um the Roper Racing logo in spots where the Hulk originally was, which is a great improvisation. I applaud them for it. Great throwback. 7 out of 10. Next up, we have Nick Sanchez's throwback to Mario Andretti. This is a great looking throwback. It's got everything you could ever want in a throwback. Accurate paint scheme, accurate number font, everything. Even down to the colored rims. Really great throwback. 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Dean Thompson's throwback to Germán Quiroga. Tricon Garage came completely out of left field with these Red Horse Racing throwbacks. And they were damn good. This one included. I love how they provided a diagram of the tiny accuracies of these throwbacks. And they went all out. They included the, the Red Horse Racing font and even laid out the, uh, the logos to match the Red Horse paint schemes. They went all out. And it's greatly appreciated. 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Corey Himes' throwback to Timothy Peters. This throwback is absolutely beautiful. A beautiful throwback to an underrated driver from an underrated truck team. Tricon Garage, hands down, has the best throwbacks of the weekend but there's just one nitpick that I want to make about this throwback the number is wrong and the reason I point that out is because Tricon does field a number 17 truck but that truck is doing a throwback to a red horse 11 while the Tricon 11 is running a throwback to a Red Horse 17. See the point I'm making here? The numbers are flipped. Why? I don't... I don't understand. Why couldn't the 17 do a throwback to the 17? Why couldn't the 11 do a throwback to the 11? Why do you gotta overcomplicate things, Tricon? Why? Though I guess I shouldn't be complaining too much. Because at least Safe Light did something new with their throwback. I would have lost my damn mind if Safe Light ran that same freaking white throwback for the fourth year in a row. But anyway, beautiful throwback. 9 out of 10. That incorrect number is the only thing keeping this from a 10. Next up. We have Taylor Gray's throwback to Todd Bodine. I already went in-depth when I talked about Corey Himes' throwback. So, 
yeah, perfect throwback number is the only thing keeping it from a perfect score. 9 out of 10. Oh, and Bubba Wallace and Tanner Gray ran the Red Horse font on their trucks as well. The whole Tricon fleet did uh, throwbacks to uh, Red Horse. But I won't be rating these two. Because the only throwbacky part of the paint scheme is, of course, the, uh, the Red Horse font. So, uh, let's move on. Next up, we have Christian Eckes' throwback to Herschel McGriff. Simple scheme, so a simple throwback. I like the roads on the side. And Herschel McGriff's name being above the uh, the number is a nice touch. And I also like the, uh, the change of number font, along with the white box. Good throwback. 7 out of 10. Next up, we have Roger Carruth's throwback to Wendell Scott. Kyle Weatherman did this same throwback last year, but this isn't the first time that a throwback has been repeated, and it's not a bad thing either. This is still a good looking throwback, though Weatherman's was better because the number was accurate, but that doesn't take away from this throwback. Still looks good. 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Ryan Vargas' throwback to Sean Woodside. This throwback is almost perfect. They captured the likeness of the original paint scheme really well. 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Josh Royelm's throwback to the late, great Ken Block. Now, I've never watched Ken Block race, but from what I've seen, he was a really really talented driver and this throwback is a great way to pay tribute to him and honor his legacy 10 out of 10 next up we have jake garcia's throwback to buckshot jones what i really love about this throwback is that it has the same sponsor crown fiber i love it when teams go the extra mile to get the original sponsor on their throwback it shows that they that they really care and the only complaint i i that i have about this throwback is that is that the uh the shade of blue is a little bit off but that's not really a big deal so yeah nine out of ten next up we have ross chastain's throwback to Lee Petty. Simple paint scheme, as was the norm back in those days. So, a simple throwback. You gotta love that Petty Blue. And it's great that uh, Worldwide Express changed their logo to match the Plymouth font on the original car. And I love how they have the horsepower there written on the hood, like um, on the original car. Because they used to do that back in the day. They'd, they'd write the, uh, the horsepower. On the uh, on the hood good throwback 7 out of 10 next up we have Carson host of ours throwback to Dale Jarrett first and foremost they brought UPS on board to sponsor the truck which I think is because UPS and Worldwide Express are business partners I think that's the reason but anyway Really cool that they brought UPS on board for the throwback. Though, there are two minor nitpicks that I want to make. It would have been, this throwback would have been better if they changed the Nice 42 font to match the Yates 88 font. But, just a minor nitpick. And, the flame pattern isn't entirely accurate. But, those two nitpicks, bleh, those two nitpicks don't take away from this throwback. It's still great. 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Daniel Dye's throwback to Richard Petty. Eric Almirola ran this same throwback in 2015, and now Petty GMS are running it again, and with great execution. My favorite part about this throwback is how on the truck bed, there's a 43, and on the original car, there's a 43 on the trunk. I like that touch. It would have been cool if they could tilt the roof number to match the original scheme but 
I can sort of see why they couldn't, since the roof is really narrow, and it probably, they probably wouldn't have been able to fit it without shrinking the number. So, besides that, great throwback. 8 out of 10. Next up, we have Lawless Allen's throwback to Adam Petty. Bubba Wallace ran this same throwback in 2019, but Nice Motorsports executed it better because they have the correct number and the correct font. Adam Petty is one of the biggest what-ifs in NASCAR, and he was taken from us way too soon. And this throwback is a great way to honor him. 10 out of 10. Next up, we have Stuart Friesen's throwback to Ivan Little. I really like the Hallmark Friesen racing approach to throwbacks. I know one year they did a Tim Richmond throwback, but for the most part, they've been doing throwbacks to local short track guys, which is a really great approach to a throwback weekend because it brings recognition to lesser known drivers. And this throwback is a great way to pay tribute to Ivan Little. 8 out of 10. And for our final throwback of part one, we have Timmy Hill's throwback to Ted Musgrave. I love it when truck teams do throwbacks to truck series legends, and they executed this throwback perfectly. I don't know what's going on with those two black boxes on the uh, on the hood there, because those aren't on the original scheme, but whatever, I'll just gloss over that. I love how they made the, uh, the U, the unit's U, fit into the paint scheme just like how it is with the Mopar logo on the original scheme. And one big nitpick I have about this throwback is the unit's font. I wish they could have changed it to match the Mopar font on the original scheme. But great throwback nonetheless. 9 out of 10. And that concludes part one of Rating Every 2023 Darlington Throwback. What do you think? Do you think some of these should have been given a higher rating? Do you think some should have been given a lower rating? How would you rate these throwbacks? Let me know in the comments below. I just want to take this time to apologize for my inactivity lately. I know it's been over two months since I last uploaded. And I just want to say I'm sorry for the lack of uploads. I've been really busy with school, and I've just got two more weeks, and then I'm done. I've got finals coming up, and it just I just don't have time to make videos for you guys, but I promise that once I, once I wrap up junior year, I'm going to be back on the grind. I'll come back to making videos for you guys, and just to give you all a... a uh, a look ahead at what's to come. I've got, of course, the Xfinity and Cup throwback videos um, coming up later this week, later this weekend, and then in two weeks, the um, Memorial Day edition of Rating Every Patriotic. So, stay tuned for that. Anyway, let's cue the outro. If you want to see more of me, be sure to follow all my socials, like my Twitter. Yes, I'm back on Twitter. My account got reinstated, finally. My Instagram, and join my Discord server. Links to all three are in the description down below. Leave a like on the video, and subscribe to my channel for more motorsports content. Thank you all so much for watching. That's it from me. Peace.